I'd like to call to order the Planning Commission regular meeting for February 16, 2023. Sarah, would you please do roll call? Yes. Anderson? Here. It's, uh, Badger? Broker? Here. Gardner? Here. Gone? Here. Lachey? I'm here. And Mance? Here. We don't have end of the alphabet people. Ed, CJ had already informed us that he was going to be unavailable, so he was an approved um, absence. He had told us that in our last month monthly meeting. Next on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. I think everyone's had an opportunity to take a look at it. It's pretty straightforward this time. So moved. So, Support moved by not. I'm sorry. Second by Lachey. All those in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion. What's that? Who motion? Bobby. Bobby. Thank you. And seconded by Mr. Lachey. Moving on, people of the minutes in your packet, there are the minutes from the regular meeting of January 19, 2023, along with a special meeting of February 2nd, 2023. Do all members of the committee have an opportunity to read through those? Anything of? I just have one correction to the um, January meeting is Anderson is E N versus O N, as only an O N would notice. So. Yeah. Very good. That's so noted. Yes. If that remains it, then I can ask for the vote. Uh, so moved. Oh, are we? I'm going to ask oh. somebody to move that we approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Voice vote. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Aye. Anyone opposed? None. Moves us to the first public comment of the evening. In this public comment section, it's to comment only on agenda items. And you can see what's on the agenda. And then when we get to the new business underneath 6A, that will be a public hearing, which will also have a public comment section to it. So you can make your public comments if you have them now or during the public hearing, if it relates to the item for 324 North Maple Street. Is there anyone in the room or online that would like to have a public comment regarding the agenda? And if so, state your name, your residence, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Seeing none, we will close this public comments. Next item on the agenda is old business. The old business was a recommendation to the city council to create a short-term rental task force. Um, Ryan, would you like to give a verbal update or I think virtually everybody was here in the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, Mr. Chair, uh, all of you, I think, are, are, are somewhat aware, but for those that, that may not be and, and for those of us that may be joining uh, and, and aren't familiar, um, the, the City Council took up your um, uh, recommendations to form a uh, short-term rental task force at their uh, workshop meeting last Wednesday. Um, they discussed the resolution and, and uh, there was consensus to at least form the task force. They further discussed the resolution language uh, on Monday during their regular meeting, uh, requested a few changes and clarifications uh, be added to the resolution, uh, and then uh, met uh, today for a special meeting right before your uh, regular meeting. Um, and um, uh, there was uh, uh, a majority vote to pass uh, a resolution forming a short-term rental task force. So. Um, so that's essentially um, moving forward. Um, from here, staff um, uh, uh, already has been working on and, and, and anticipating that uh, a task force would be formed, uh, an application uh, that will likely be put out uh, tomorrow or Monday. Um, it'll probably be open for about a two week period. Um, I kind of gauge the interest that, that, that we're seeing. Um, keep the mayor in the loop, see where we're at on applications and, and, and those spots, and then work with uh, uh, the mayor and, and chair Manns to actually schedule um, interviews uh, 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 with some folks that are interested in serving on the task force, and then ultimately 
uh, the mayor will bring forth the recommendations on who will serve on the task force to the city council for a vote. Um, from there, um, the task force will, will have been formed, have membership, um, and then in the meantime, staff is going to be working uh, to um, identify a uh, consultant planner that uh, has familiarity and experience in working through short-term rental regulations uh, to help uh, facilitate uh, and guide the task force's work. And, and then over the next several months, all of you will be uh, getting regular updates. No, um, right. I think it, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, a couple of quick questions. One, and, and they may have been addressed in one of the meetings. One, um, the copy or the wording of the final resolution, is that available on the city's website or will that be available somewhere that, that people can see? It is, Mr. Cliche. Um, in today's uh, city council special meeting packet is the resolution that they passed. Okay. Yep. And and the second question is, um, I, I, I know that um, the ability to apply will be on probably everybody's email that gets from the city, but I wonder if we might want to put an ad in the commercial record also saying uh, soliciting um, participation or applications. Yep, certainly something that uh, that we can explore. Um, just to, yeah, just to, we could get that right well, next week's paper still. A little bigger yep. universe of, of potential applicants, mm -hmm. perhaps. Good idea. The, uh, <clears throat> uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lachey. So uh, on the applications, I've actually already sent out applications to five people. So, and I believe two of them have already returned their applications. Uh, there's another person that just emailed me earlier today was asking to make sure he knew how to get his application in. So I don't think there's going to be any paucity of people interested in this. And I talked with Chairman Manns earlier today. Um, these people had reached out to me before the resolution was even approved. Mm -hmm. So I gave them the application that currently is on the website. And I just said, make sure Mark clearly in your application, as well as your cover letter that you are applying for the short-term rental task force, you're more than welcome to join and be considered for other boards and commissions, which have opportunities. But if you're interested in that, so um, those have probably already landed in Jamie's um, inbox. So I don't think we're going to have an issue at all, but I appreciate where Mr. Lachey is coming from. I think getting the word out to as many people as we can, even those that don't necessarily get online and read the newspaper of which I'm one, let's see both areas promote this. So yeah, nope, yeah. That, uh, fair, uh, fair request. And uh, we'll take a look at that. And um, as far as the application goes, uh, the application that we'll be using will be very similar to what we already have. Um, there's just kind of some extra language related to this task force because there's certain kind of membership that 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 you all recommended and city council would like um, represented on the task force. Um, and then it also kind of has some extra information about, you know, this is a big time commitment over the next several months. So that way folks are at least uh, aware of that uh, and have that full knowledge as they're, as they're going forward, this would be a big commitment, so. Would you mind forwarding that application to us? Certainly, yep. Thank you. Yeah. Good idea. And it's not complete yet, but it is. It's, it's using, and one of the things that I was, um, to Mr. Gardner's comment, if somebody does go to the website and they pull up the, tr the traditional application for any of the committees, that can that will be accepted. We're not going to have make them have to fill out because we're hoping that they will provide that data either in a cover letter or that gives a little bit on their qualifications. Um, I did speak with Jamie and she said yes, she would do a blast email out to the <clears throat> all the residents that she has the emails for, which is like 375 or 380 oh, households, I believe it is. Um, and then we did discuss, and I think you guys can discuss further, you know, what it would go on our website, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the application, but then maybe even in, in the passing of the resolution, as well as on this minute, uh, minutes from this meeting, encouraging people to consider uh, filling out an application. And then the commercial record was being discussed, uh, you know, as, as dropping it in, just like we would if we had openings on any various uh, committee where we'd run an ad just to kind of say that we have openings and you can fill it out. So we do want to get it out. And I think even as, as we concluded the special meeting with his council and they were talking about it, we had all those people online. I almost wanted to remind Scott to tell him, hey, everybody who said that they were interested, the application will be online early next week. You know, please you know, fill it out and let us know because even reading the applications, I think will help us in, you know, getting a sense as to how important it is or getting some different viewpoints. Yeah, that's why we, we, you know, and I'll, I'll make sure and share the link with all of you. And uh, we really want to encourage folks to, to try to, to the extent possible, use the, the the one that we're creating for this, just so we can gather that that data right up front as far as who they're, the, you know, what spot they're looking to fill. But 
we'll work with folks with what we get. So yeah. right, because I think the for end user for all of you you filled it out when you're going to be on planning. You know, you select what committee, and then you you can attach your credit qualifications or why you think you'd be good for the committee. The reason why we were talking about maybe listing the different stakeholder groups is just for the sake that if I was reviewing it or Ryan or any of us, it could state the person's um, you know name and all their qualifications, but we'd kind of be guessing as to you know where do they live or are they a business owner or are they a short term rental owner? So you need to kind of have that in the application so that we can kind of know where they would fit in in the stakeholder groups. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason for you know trying to create a separate application. Yeah, the the a um, uh, couple things that come to mind that I don't think were discussed at length at the council meeting or the planning commission. Two things. One is that there probably will need to be some brief education about Open Meeting Act compliance because this is a public task force. And uh, for those that are new to this, they just may need a quick refresher on what is in bounds and what's out of bounds. And two is it's not a legislative body. So my question is, if someone is applying for and gets approved, but they're not here full time, will they be allowed because these meetings will be presumably on Zoom like we have our other meetings? Will someone be allowed to be a member of the task force, but maybe be allowed to join remotely as opposed to being in person? And I don't think that was discussed. So we probably want some clarification around that. Yeah. And I, 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 I reached out to the city attorney um, earlier this week. I don't know if uh, do you want to speak to this tonight or I can speak to our, the conversation yeah. I have with Chris? So. I think what we're dealing with this today is the resolution itself says that we the task force are subject to follow-up. Mm -hmm. uh, right. I, I thank you. And I think that's just something as you, you know, review the applications and, and have interviews is to discuss with the applicants that expectation and see if there's going to be any issue that they could not be in attendance. And if they can't be, you know, you know, we've got council members and other commissioners that, you know, are not at certain meetings, but they're online Correct. for various reasons. So I think that's just something that needs to be discussed. And we, that is one of the questions that's on the right. application. Right. The other thing is, since like you had mentioned, they really won't be you know, making any type of policies or research. So if there was to be a member who can't be present, you do have the ability, they could be on, on Zoom and there will be a public comment section at the front and at the back end. They can actually express, you know, kind of their thoughts during that, but they, they won't be able to actively engage in the meeting part of it. And I'll tell you that, uh, Mr. Chair, your, your city clerk is uh, on top of things, and uh, she's literally just emailed out the uh, the email blast. So she's ahead nice. of all of us. Oh, so wow. there you that's go. The, thank, you, Jamie. Uh, that's, thank you, Jamie. Uh, that's 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 hey, Jamie, right thank you. there. So thank you very much. I have a question. I did tell you. I'm sorry. Please. Yes. No, go if you were going to say something. I was just gonna say that I want to really thank Jamie because when I was talking to her the other day, I could tell that. She was hearing all of these new meetings, new task force, and I could see in her mind, she was thinking, where am I going to get that extra 10 or 12 hours per month? Mm -hmm. And so I was concerned that I was, you know, asking of something that was over and above, but thank you, Jamie. So what will be the process for uh, the city council appointing its representative and the planning commission appointing its two representatives? Uh, Scott and I will kind of discuss this. What we wanted to, I, I believe we've been trying to solicit from, I know I have from each of you, if you have an interest in, you know, being considered for it. And I think Scott's been trying to do the same thing with city council. And then the, um, one of the things that we had originally talked about was to kind of look at the applicants and gauge, you know, um, who we're going to have, um, interviewed from the various stakeholders and then try to make certain that we pick the right people that we kind of uh, fit in with the mix of the other six stakeholders with the idea that, you know, we didn't have a specific date yet because a lot of this conversation was all contingent on this getting passed tonight and you didn't want to put the cart too front because we didn't want to fall into a situation where you're discussing something before city council actually approved the formation. So I would, I would anticipate that that would probably happen. Um, we're thinking that we'd start the 
potentially the interview process is towards the end of the first week of March, according to the second week of March, and that we would then uh, reach out to planning and city council at the same time um, with um, the selection of those individuals. Mm -hmm. And and to answer your question, Commissioner Gaunt, um, city council typically the approaches of the mayor, as Chairman Mann suggests, talks to the council members, gauges interest, and then formulates a recommendation to the council for formal approval. Um, I'm assuming that is in past practices that he probably will talk with the chairman of the planning commission to say, here's who, here's who, this is the direction this is going, comfortable with that, and then the council will. Um, Take that up. I think probably during I don't know which next meeting, but very soon, be my guess. Just a thought, apropos to really nothing. Um, sure. But I was just thinking about the workload in terms of the interview process, in terms of the number of applications, and wondering. I don't know whether this would be appropriate or not. But if the representatives from planning and um, the council were appointed sooner rather than later. It might even be appropriate or helpful if they could be engaged in that interview yep. process. That's all. That's a great thought. It's been discussed. Yep. Okay. No, I, I appreciate that because it's, and I think we've also gotten the opinion that just so that we would know that if we ended up with 40 or 50 you know, applications, that um, we can actually reach out you know, and, and talk to each of them. But we do not have to physically bring like 50 people in. You can oh. kind of you can kind of narrow it down, but you will have to have a contact and a conversation. Uh, somebody was telling me it's like if they ran if a corporation was running a job opening and they got 200 applications, they don't sit down and interview 200 people. They would you know try to uh, bring it down. And I got to go over those details again with Scott. We kind of held off on not trying to get too far ahead, so we'll kind of get that resolved over the next couple of weeks. But it, those are very good points. Thank you. Anything else on the old business of the short-term rental at this time? It's heartening how engaged people are, um, both you know um, among council and the planning commission, but the community members, staff. Um, it's it's really I think been a a good process, a productive process. I think it shows that it clearly is a topic, just like it was on the strategy reports for city council, but. Everyone feels that it's not only timely now, but it's probably been something that's several years has been kind of kicked down. And I think <laughs> Councilman Gardner said it tonight too. Probably some of the reasons why it has is that it really is one of the challenging topics. And so um, I think it's very good, you know, that and I commend all, all of you and you know the planning commission, you know, for kind of you know, putting it on our agenda as a priority and then seeing it from the residents. And I do think that this will be something that. You're going to get a lot of information, you know, out to the community, and the community will really kind of have a better feel as to where we stand, you know, from just a data collection, and you know, what are kind of some of the concerns, what are the priorities, and then as as it moves forward, we'll kind of you know see. And again, no one should make the assumption that you know there's definitely going to be you know, things occur, but it, my guess is everyone will, will come out of this more enlightened, and everyone would also realize that the whole focus is to try to make certain that. It allows Sagatuck to be Sagatuck and continue to be what makes all of us want to live here, you know, moving forward. So I feel really good about the direction. And so, I'm, and I'm willing to put the work in just like all the members here are, as well as the city council. With that, we're gonna move on to new business. The new business that we have before us is a proposal request for a rent Accelerate dwelling unit and site plan review for 324 North Maple Street. However, this will require it to be a public hearing. So what I will be needing to do is to open up a public hearing. So I'm gonna to call to order the, a public hearing for the proposed um, rental unit at 324 North Maple Street. Public hearing begins at 7.21 p.m. on today, February 16, 2023. At this time, I'd like to ask the zoning administrator to kind of give us a summary of the proposal in front of us. And then once the summary is concluded, we will ask the applicant to come up and address us. Certainly, Mr. Chair. 
Uh, the uh, applicant, uh, Chris and Kelly uh, Bauman, uh, and Mr. Bauman is uh, present here uh, at your meeting today, uh, has applied for a special land use approval uh, to rent their accessory dwelling unit uh, at 324 North uh, Maple Street. Um, in this case, uh, this accessory dwelling unit is actually above uh, their garage and is already built. Uh, and, and I'm not sure how many of these have or haven't been before you in the past. And um, so the accessory dwelling unit can be built and, and kind of used for your guests and, and others that may be visiting you. But at the point that you want to rent the uh, accessory dwelling unit separate from the single family home, um, you have to have the single family home as uh, an owner occupied home. Uh, in this case, uh, it is by Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Bauman. Uh, and it requires special land use approval from the Planning Commission. So that's why this is before you um, this evening. Um, our planning consultant has uh, gone to great lengths to uh, uh, provide you with some comments on the various regulations that apply. Uh, there's Federal of Accessory Dwelling Unit regulations as it relates to the special land use. There's General Accessory Dwelling Unit Standards. Uh, and then there's the overall site plan uh, and special land use uh, standards that are in your zoning ordinance. Um, unless there's any questions for me, um, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Very good. At this time, I'd like to ask the applicant if you would please come forward, say your name, and give us a little bit on the presentation of what you're asking. Of course. Hi, all. Uh, my name is Chris Bowman, my wife at home with our uh, three kids. Uh, that are all in the public schools here. So my wife and I, we moved here a couple of years back um, from Chicago, which I'm sure a lot of you hear many people doing that exact same thing. Um, our original plan was to have kind of a vacation home that we would come and visit during the summer. But for us, we really fell in love with the community and um, you know just all the people that, uh, that we've been able to connect with. So um, our idea was we see a lot of different... Um, this community as a place many people like to come and visit. Um, but at the same time, we wanted to be able to create not just another rental experience for people. We wanted it to be something that would be more of an experiential experience for people to come. We've kind of dedicated for ourselves. We really enjoy um, kind of marketing Saga Tech as a community that it is, all of the different businesses that are located within the area. Um, and that would be something that we would promote really heavily to the um, to the guests that we would be working together with locally. Our other kind of commitment would be looking at the place itself and making sure that it wasn't going to be an issue for folks that are around us in our neighborhood. Um, so we've tried to go um, a few different steps to be able to make sure that there's not extra cars and different things on the street. So we've created an extra bump out with it in our driveway um, so that there's a specific spot for guests to be able to stay. In the um, along the street, we have some crushed gravel where if there ever were friends or guests of ours that uh, wanted to come and visit, they wouldn't be blocking our guests to be coming out. Um, so really making sure that it's not going to be an issue for the community. Um, but really, ultimately, our goal is to have a, um, a unique stay and a unique space for our guests to come, promote the community, and hopefully be able to um, increase, increase business for the different business owners here. Um, but lastly, um, you know, I will mention that we are willing to um, not just be self-managing this, that this would be something that we would have uh, managed by a professional property manager, again, to be able to go through the process of screening at different applicants as they're coming through, making sure the best of the best are coming through the community. So that's all I have, unless you have some additional questions. Any questions for the applicant from? No, I think you've done a very good job in kind of presenting it. Say thank you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome to the community. At this time, we would open up for public comment regarding the, app the applicant. If you would like to speak, uh, come forward to the mic if you're here in the room or raise your hand if you are joining us via Zoom. Identify yourself with your name and address. Is there anyone who would like to speak within the room? Please come forward. Anyone online that would like to speak in regards to this application? <clears throat> Don't see any. 
Seeing none, then we will close. Yeah, just real quick, Mr. Chair, there was one uh, email in your packet related to this particular item from uh, uh, Terry Shanahan at 305 uh, North Maple. Um, Terry, uh, I'm, I'm just summarizing, unless uh, there's a request from the group to, to read more detail. Um, wanted to kind of express some concerns related, you know, in, in general related to kind of rental properties uh, in the area before uh, this particular, you know, property was maybe approved. Uh, there were some concerns uh, uh, laid out about noise and um, uh, kind of some firework activity uh, from certain folks. Um, again, these were just in general. Um, noise, late night partying was mentioned as a concern. There was a mention of parking problems uh, at certain properties um uh, on the streets that uh have, have rental properties uh there was con concern mentioned about trespassing um and, uh some vandalism and thefts and uh trash uh some fire concerns right um so all of those that, that correspondence was in your pack i just want to make sure that that's clear for uh, the record that that was related to that case and and thank you, Ryan, because I was looking down and I knew about the supporting comments. I have to do those before you close the public hearing. So I was I was jumping ahead, actually. Sorry. Not a problem. But yes, we did have that one and it is in the packet. Um, just for what for my two cents worth, I, I don't I read the letter. Um, although the subject is response to planning meeting on 216, I don't see anything referenced, and she does live on Maple. I don't see any reference particularly to this particular application at 324 North Maple. Um, so I, she may be talking about this, but I don't think it's clear that she is. So um, I would hate to have this letter necessarily be put as a um, comment against the applicant tonight, unless I'm missing something in the letter. She's specifically talking about all the problems at 319 North Maple, which, if my math is right, is not even on the same side of the street as the applicant tonight. So, and right. I, I Mitchell mean, Lachey, I think that if my reading of it was in that first paragraph where uh, Terry Lynn had addressed, I'm writing to detail you some of the issues caused by short term rental properties before you approve a variance allowing another short term rental. And the only thing that was on our agenda that was asking for a variance or for a special land use was this. So, so I, we did kind of relate that to the 324, but yes, her comments are more in general regarding short-term rentals kind of falls into what we were talking about, you know, for the task force is kind of identifying what are some of the issues. Um, you know, That's the, why I'm saving it. Like that was my interpretation, but then I did not see the word another property. So whatever. Yes. Yeah. All right. Fair yeah. enough. I, um, I just didn't want it to go on the record that this was necessarily against the particular applicant, correct, but correct. because I think it's rather vague. And I don't think it should really, that's why it was when it came down to, is it a supporting or opposing comment? It was just an overall comment as opposed to anything directly related to the property of 324. Thank you. No, thank you. Given that, I think we've covered all the comments, so we will close the public comment of the commission deliberation. I have a couple, a question and a comment for our director of planning. Um, Ryan, on page 12, nine, number nine in the comment, mm -hmm. the ADU is approved by the city and has assumed this requirement is satisfied. Is that something we should verify or was verified at the time? And it might not be, but assumptions always make me wonder if we should be assuming. Um, certainly, I think you could ask the applicant, you know, this evening if um, at least to gather some sort of evidence. I mean, I, I know, for example, right now I'm reviewing a, uh, an accessory dwelling unit above a garage, very similar circumstance in a, another area of the city. And, and uh, we've asked them to demonstrate compliance that they're going to, um, you know, how they're going to run the lines from the main house that they're um, going to be independent, not separately metered, that sort of thing. Um, it certainly should have been checked when it was built. Um, perhaps the applicant can okay. expound on that if you'd like a little more evidence to make your decision on if that standard's been met. Chris, do you have one meter or two? Great. 
Um, and then the other thing actually to the letter that we received on page 16, number five, is we're wording um, our comments in the future, you might just hedge the language a little bit, given that I think people would define effect on their, you know, welfare in different ways, even though my reading too was that her letter wasn't specific to this property. And based on your application, the applicant's application, it sounds like you're very sensitive to the issues that people in the neighborhood experience, which is commendable. Um, but I think as we're wording stuff, just, I mean, maybe not be as definitive in language and say, you know, an insignificant or, you know, not a significant impact or something like that. So that people rather than no, it, no impact, you know, a minimal impact or something like that does not appear to have additional impact. Yeah, yeah. Any, like any, I, I know I'm more couched words, splitting yeah. hairs, but I was a hair splitter for a <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that's a great idea um, as well. People, people sue over that's the, right definitive statements <laughs> um <clears throat> chairman man i i do appreciate where commissioner lachey was coming from in terms of um, the interpretation of that letter and i would recommend that that letter become part of the data collection for the task force because that is a great list of things that i've heard from a number of different people throughout this town in terms of the issues that they've experienced um and i do want to thank the applicant for being here this evening um as the owner of an auxiliary dwelling unit on my property um, and there's a number of them in town. This is not new for the community to have a suggestion like this. Um, and I appreciate your application and everything that you put together on this. I would also, if you've not seen that letter from your neighbor, I'd read it. And I don't know the I don't know that person. I know the last name, but I don't know the person personally. So I think that's also part of this community too, is hearing from the people that live around us. And even though they're not speaking to you necessarily, it's a good thing to just kind of identify with what they're experiencing and go over and say hi and say, I'm not going to be that neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this has been a, a learning process. You know, short term rentals are, as, as you know, a topic of discussion. And, um, you know, the and I want to give some kudos to the writers of the ordinance because this special land use exists in all of I believe in all of the zoning districts in, in the city. Short term rentals are allowed as an allowed use except for auxiliary dwelling units, which must go through a different process as a special land use. So there's some thought behind this. So we're, you know, we're not starting from ground zero on this and, and um, no one here can answer the question about why it was written that way. But this type of a, this type of a situation has been in this town ever since I can remember. People renting out a room over their garage or renting out a room in their basement. I've got an example next door in the house that used to do that. So, it's not unusual to see this from my estimation on a new property. That's, that's probably the angle here that most people are kind of, kind of figuring out. Um, and I've had several of your neighbors ask me, Hey, were you aware of this or, you know, kind of what helping them understand what the zoning ordinance allows. So there's a lot of education to be done on short-term rentals with auxiliary dwelling units as well as in general too. So um, long story short, it's a learning process for me as well in terms of how this works and uh, just appreciate your application this evening. So. Very good. And I was going to wrap up deliberation. Was wanted to tell you thank you. I've driven by your um, new property. It's a beautiful job. It looks very good. And so I think hopefully you'll you'll you and your wife and your family will enjoy it. And I think that you you put a lot of thought into it when I was even going through the plans. You know, as to how you want to try to make it something that is unique. You know, for for your renters. And by looking through, you know, what Ryan, which I thank you, and the consultant, you know. Put, identifying each one of the compliance items and kind of giving us clear, you know, we really don't have a lot of places where you didn't meet, you know, what was required. So I congratulate you on that. And so is there anything else that we need before? I did have one question uh, for Ryan. Um, just a really just a confirmation of assumption, an assumption I'm making, which is that if we do approve this, um, this is entirely separate from the permitting process for short-term rentals. The, yeah, correct. correct. So they, well, that's initially how we ended up here. Uh, we started he, uh, with this, but yes, if, uh, assuming that you approve a uh, the special land use, then they would apply for a short-term rental uh, certificate and have to go through the inspections with the fire authority and pay the fee for that. And yes. Okay. Thank you. The, uh, 
I appreciated that question. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, very good question. Thank you. And also uh, on item one under the um, review, um, Number one, and this is coming straight from the zoning code, a rented accessory dwelling unit shall only be permitted on a parcel that contains an owner-occupied detached single family dwelling unit, which is this is that's this falls into that. Mm -hmm. And the comment from the um, <clears throat> planning consultant and our staff is the owners intend to remain occupants of the principal detached single family dwelling. This will remain an ongoing requirement. My question is if let's say the ownership changes, or let's say that the owners make a decision that they would like to become, they move out and they want to convert their home to a short-term rental. How does that affect the permit that presumably would be issued for the auxiliary dwelling unit? You understand what I'm asking? Yep. All of a sudden you have two rentals on one property. Right. So um, Mr. Lee can speak to this. We just, we just went through a very extensive review on this because um, Either one of us were here when those regulations were written back in 2010, and um, it was there was a lot of moving pieces or a lot of different pieces that kind of pulled together to, to make sure that we're interpreting this this correctly. But uh, essentially, um, if they moved out, um, they could rent the short term rent they could rent the main home and the accessory dwelling unit to, together under a single contract, so as one whole short term rental, um, but they could not separately rent. The accessory dwelling unit and single family home uh, under our zoning ordinance. So um, the accessory dwelling unit can only be rented if they're residing in that, that home uh, mm -hmm. as, as the owners uh, or renting the whole property together as one short-term rental. And if that situation were to occur, and I'm not, I'm just thinking through scenarios here from a planning mm -hmm. standpoint, if they were to move out, how would we know that? What's what? What type of compliance do we have to ensure that if that were to occur? And I'm not. I'm not suggesting that this is what's going to happen, but I'm just thinking ahead. If that situation were to occur, how would we know? And then that does that. Then let's say we find out. Then too, is that does that new property owner have to then reapply to have the auxiliary dwelling unit remain a short-term rental? So does that travel with the property or with the owner? So, so the special land use approval carries with the land. So if they were to sell the property, and Mr. Woody, correct me if I'm saying anything incorrectly here tonight, um, <laughs> it carries with the land. So if they were to sell it to somebody, that new owner could occupy the single family dwelling and rent the accessory dwelling unit, and they would not have to come back. But um, if that use were to be abandoned in some way uh, for a period of time, there was intent to abandon the use, then there, there, there would be a requirement to come back. If, our current short-term rental regulations require that you receive a certificate every three years. Mm -hmm. So, but there's also a caveat to that, that if you have a new owner, that new owner has to come and apply for a short-term rental certificate. So if somebody was coming and applying to rent the accessory dwelling unit and the single family home separately, well, that would raise a red flag for me. Um, and in fact, that, that situation has occurred on some other properties recently. So, um, that would be a, a check that we would have to, to know whether or not they're trying to rent them separately and, and whether or not that would be allowed. Thank you. Thank you. And I, which also kind of leads into some of the discussion that happened earlier tonight within council regarding this, the overall compliance. And I think that's one of the things that we will be looking at with the task force. And as we move forward, you know, is, you know, how do we really monitor the compliance of some of the short-term rentals, but I can actually speak, you know, we have a, a home that's located near myself and Holly that, was a hot was a home and a separate garage and they built a ADU on top and it has now converted to short-term rental but that is one of the things that they were that they were aware of is that they can only rent the entire property you know or they can stay and live in the home and then rent the ADU but they can never have two separate renters mm -hmm. and again so I was familiar with how the how that that would be handled now the compliance side of it you know when there are people there there's times where I'm like I really don't know if it's just a really large gathering, they got people in the house and the people in the ADU, um, you know, but I can assure you that if we had any issues, we would definitely be finding out, you know, but, <laughs> but so far it hasn't been, but it does go with, with the actual property, but that is the rules for it. And they can right now, they can lose their license if it was reported that they were uh, renting them to both separately. I do have a question on this just for, really from for educational purposes probably more than anything but the comment on the 
point about the main dwelling unit being owner-occupied says this will remain an ongoing requirement. I guess I'm just trying to reconcile that with the fact that it doesn't sound like it would be an ongoing requirement if the entire property were rented out as one. It would be an, the, both an ongoing both. requirement to just rent the ADU. To just rent the ADU. You have to be... So it's always to rent the ADU only, you have to be a resident in the primary dwelling. Okay, so I must have misunderstood. You can't rent the primary unit and the ADU together as one. You can. It could be. Yes, as under one that's, single contract. That's underneath just our regular short-term rental ordinances. Yeah, because it's a permitted use within it's that permitted district. Use. So it's no longer an accessory dwelling unit. Is it, it's then, then it's you're renting the entire be, property. Because this is an ongoing requirement to implies that, that it's no longer we're no longer operating under this framework if that happens so it's an ongoing requirement to rent it separately from the single family home if for some reason they decided they were going to move out and rent out the entire property as a um short-term rental and this is where I, mr witty can probably fill in the gaps a little bit more on what the requirements would be for like abandoning a use if they did that for a significant period of time and maybe abandoned the use in some way i mean that, yeah i mean it, if the property is no longer owner occupied, that would fail the condition of the special needs. Okay. Um, if that happens, and then subsequent to that, the entire property was rented out as a short term rental under a single contract, that does not require special needs. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Anything else? No, no, just the, the, permutations and machinations of yes <laughs> props that you know all of this well yeah well <laughs> without looking through you know shuffling through papers I, I, again i just have to compliment the the people that wrote the zoning ordinance because i think there's there's some perceptions in the community that it's a poor ordinance and it's we're at we're in the wild west when it comes to this and we're really not i mean can there always be improvements in the zoning ordinance yes of course there can be but this shows some foresight from the people that wrote this, you know, what, 11, 12 years ago, that thinking ahead. I mean, it's, it's a, we have a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good ordinance in place. And um, I just want to compliment, you know, just, we have things in place. It's not like we're not operating without rules. Right. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Would anyone like to make a motion? <clears throat> so moved. I guess we should make the motion to approve or? So move to approve. Second. We have a motion on the floor to approve the application as presented. Uh, I've asked the clerk to do a roll call on this one. Anderson? Yes. Uh, Broker? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Don? Yes. Lachey? Yes. And me? Yes. So it passes unanimously. Congratulations. Now you can go ahead and apply for the short term rental. <laughs> <laughs> see me again yes <laughs> yes okay and then we get back to the agenda did you close the public hearing that's what yeah i did before I we started closed it and yeah. i did the yeah. deliberation so that concludes new business um communications that are in in your packet You'll see that we had the letter from Jim Boak and Linda uh, emailed. They were primarily in regards to the task force and the formation of the short term. So, and then of course the letter we just referred to from Terry is in the packet that regards the indirectly the uh, 324. And I do think I agree with Councilman and Representative here, Mr. Gardner, that that is something we will also keep for our short-term rental task force in the packet because it does kind of identify some of the things that have been brought to our attention. And that's only ones that I have down and it's in the packet also for the communication. Yeah, and just one communication from me that I, I didn't get into your packet in time, um, uh, but it, it wasn't the council's packet, it was the uh, planning, zoning, and project report that you requested to be in your packet. So I at least provided it separately in uh, printed format uh, for you this evening as well. Perfect. Can I, can I say, yeah. I, 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 um, I will echo council's comments um, this evening. 
in terms of the quality, the excellent quality of that report, right? Yes, yes. I agree. It's, it's, it's very helpful. helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's when I was going to throw it into the reports and committees. And there's no question that it's one of the first things I look at when the packet kind of comes mm -hmm. out just to kind of scan through and get an update on what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like some of the things that you've also done, Sarah and Jamie, with the website and the updates on the minutes. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps people informed and it makes it easier for you to kind of follow. And so I, I really do appreciate it. And I think all of us do. Yeah. Thank you. Chairman Manz, I have one question on the planning and zoning case where property 255 Spear Street, which is right next door to me. Mm -hmm. When I saw this in your report, existing short-term rental changed ownership. Um, there were some issues with the lights, so I was texting with her anyway. I said, hey, by the way, I didn't know you sold the property. And she said, no, she hasn't sold the property. So I was curious when I saw that comment, existing short-term rental changed ownership. So I know who she bought it from, and that was purchased, I think, a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. So back to my earlier question about the actual rental license. So the short-term rental license is for three years. So if the property is sold during that three-year period, that permit carries forward to the end of the three years. Is that correct? Is that how that works? Because the property owner told me she hasn't sold it. Right. So yeah, you have that down as 255 Spear? Yeah, that's what's on your report, 255 Spear. It's yellow. It's no, yeah, it, I'd, have, it's I'd have to look back. and uh, She may have bought so. it before well, or here, after the original so, license came out. Uh, the person who owned it before her, Scott Sanderson, sold it to, her name is Carrie Lake, sold it to her, I'm going to say maybe about two years ago at at, at the most. Um, he has been renting that as a short-term rental for, uh, for as long as I can remember, and she assumed ownership and then kept it as a short-term rental. And um, when I saw this property number on here, I thought, wait a minute, did she sell it? And I had to contact her about some light issues that were going on just to give her a heads up. And I said, hey, by the way, I've noticed that you changed ownership. Did you sell it? She says, no, I haven't sold it. So that's the reason I'm bringing the question up is it's been a short-term rental for a long time. It's been sold to Lake. So the permit, assuming it had a permit, was, did that carry forward? To, does he, do you understand the question I'm asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that specific property, I see I have a number of different I, notes. Yeah, I have I to go back. And, on here. I'm just, yeah, so we were checking on some things related to the carriage house, and um, I'd have to go back and, and take a look at all the exact. So I think that one looks like it was like a carryover that that was on a, a hold status for a while uh, that we we're trying to clean up. Okay. So, yeah, I'm um, just, I'd, I'd like some clarification on that. And that's also a house which has a house with a garage it used to be a garage nope. been converted to a, a studio i guess for lack of a better term i don't know if it's been defined as an auxiliary dwelling unit but i've seen no evidence that the house has been rented separately from the mm -hmm. it's always been rented as one parcel so i just now that i'm learning more about this right. generally i'm Keep just starting to, yeah just starting <laughs> to look at things a little bit differently so i just appreciate some clarification around that item mm -hmm. Certainly. thank you I, so that would be the communications, reports of officers and committees. I don't think we have any this time. Which will move us to agenda item number nine, which will be public comments. And at this time, it can be public comments for anyone that's in the room or online. And it can relate to anything that you would like to bring before the planning commission. And if you would like to speak, just come to the microphone if you're in the room or raise your hand if you're online. And as before, just give your name and your address and then limit any comments that you may have to three minutes or less. Is there anyone in the room that would like to make a gen general public comment? Seeing none online, seeing none, we will close the second public comment. At this time then, it leads us to a motion to adjourn.